Okay, it's time now for the final update again, and it's a brand new uh, video, and as you all know, yes, we have got a cat football vinyl here, which I'm going to review now. Uh, this is actually a continuation of the video that I did previously, um, and there'll be a lot more uh, videos coming up like this anyway in the next couple of weeks, so uh, do look out for them anyway. But as you all know, yes, uh, the favorite special label first, Passion Records, has returned, and um, I am actually thinking about redoing a video of Passion Records anyway, um, which is coming, which will be coming out um, soon. But uh, anyway, first of all, we're going to do this is a Passion Record release. This is from 1984. This is uh, a cover song of um, uh, I think it was the the girl who did this, uh, Amazulu did this originally, but it was again um, Good Player Radio that they decided to do their own version of it, which is Montego Bay. Montego Sweet, um, which is actually Nigel Wright wrote that part. It's actually just all it is. It's just basically Montego Bay. But what Nigel Wright did on this was he just wrote a new version of it, which was just basically would be uh, Caribbean type uh, pop music for it as well. And I have to say, this is the best version to actually go for because the recording on this is brilliant. Tracy's vocals on this is really good, and they Tracy Hickman who actually sang this as well. This is on Passion Thirty One. This is an original. This. Uh, uh, was the first time, and I don't know whether I'm actually right about this, but I think Robin Sellers was the first time he worked with um, with um, Nigel, I think, at the time. I think it was. I'm not sure. I'm caught on that anyway. Uh, this was uh, this was um, recorded at Scratch Studios. It was. I think it was just basically put out very quick because. Um, I think the way they did it was they they when they heard the Amazulu version was getting recorded and then the B side was obviously excitable which was Caribbean type thing. I think Chris Blackwell, um, I think Nigel had asked Chris Blackwell if he could do his own version of it and then I think he just uh, he said yeah why not we'll go ahead. And so it's uh, so this version is very very good actually. Uh, actually I've played it a couple of times at Tavern actually and they quite like it actually which is good. So this is the uh, original uh, release of it. Now, one thing that amuses me about this is when I go like this, it was damaged. It was really, really badly damaged. I had to clean it with the, the obviously the uh, alcohol in it, which was very, very good indeed. What about it says is what's weird about the vinyl is you've got this groove that's here. Can you can see from the light? There's like a groove thing there, which is like a like a like a part of it's like kind of like saying it's actually warped. Actually, what that means is it's just that it's just I don't know if it's the vinyl itself has been pressed on, but it might be the way that it's probably been. Uh, in like a, in, it looks like it's been in the oven, basically. It's like, what, what type of thing? But it's not. But it's, uh, but it's very unusual. But it's actually been pressed at a different factory. So this has been pressed at a different factory. This one, and I'll explain the factory in a minute. So it's obviously engraved. It, it's got a passion. It's a Pash twelve thirty one A A. I think it's A one. I think it's A one. Uh, there's no indication who actually mastered it, but it doesn't actually. The thing about this is. Uh, that, uh, yes, there he is. Jack Adams did do this one. Uh, famous engineer of the world, brilliant. Uh, it's obviously been pressed at mast, so it must be masters, obviously, which is not, it's actually not Damon, actually. Damon's not actually engraved on this at all. It's actually uh, done at uh, masters in um, London. So that's probably why the master master implant was a bit thing for it. Sound quality, this is really bloody awesome. Uh, very good engineering on this as well by Robin Sellers. Really fantastic uh, sound version on this one. Now, now, you may think the A-side is good. Now, what, we, what we've got on the reverse of it is very unusual. And I don't know whether, I don't know whether Passion fans want to hear this, but let's talk about the B-side. The B-side, guys. Now, now what's interesting about the B-side, and I don't know whether, I, I don't know whether to talk about this or not, but, this is the most weirdest B-side ever, ever in the world. Weirdest B-side ever in the world, right? There's a few little issues with this as well, the B-side. I will explain in a minute, right? So after they recorded that side, okay, then they decided, well, what we're going to put on, what should we put the B-side? Uh, a new song? Nigel Sock should write a new song? Or shall we decide our own version of it? Well, uh, well, uh, well, unfortunately, this was the bad. The, the, this is actually the baddest B side ever in the world of passion. This is not the best B side to ever go for. You know, 
Uh, I think this was just to us a joke, or either they were just pissing around and just thinking, why the hell have we done this for? So, I'm going to explain why this is the baddest B side. Now, it's not, it's not as bad, it's just the fact that where it is, it's slow. It's a slow B side. So, it's called uh, No Problem. Now, I, I know why it's called that, and I know why Nigel's name's not on this. Because it's actually Nigel Wright that's doing it, actually. What is interesting is why is why is it Nigel, Robin, and Tracy are all written this right? Apparently, Nigel Wright was the was the writer of it, as he writes music. Robin Sellers writes music. But why is Tracy's name on there when she doesn't even sing on the song? Because it's an instrumental version. It's a slowed version of Montego Bay. What is her involvement with this song? I have no idea. But it looks like it might. she might have had lyrics originally for the song, but they're not on this version. They're not. It must be just a demo that they've done. So, um, this B-side is, is just a, a little... I think what it was, I think what it sounds to me is it's a demo of another song that they were, were in progress of writing but was not meant meant to be on a release of another passion release of it. So it's kind of be it sucks a little bit. But it's for the B side it's a bit naff. I mean it's, it is naff. It's just naff. They just said, oh, I'll just stick it on. Fuck it. So I think they had a bad day when they were doing it read to be honest with you. Um but uh no but it's also mean the mouse as well. B side is very short. It's two minutes long. It's the grooves on this are bloody ex I mean, see the grooves in there. They have been expanded a lot in this. So if we get the camera just a little bit, of, I don't know if it's going to focus or not, but uh, it looks like it's been like meshed out too big. And they just said, yeah, we'll just, we'll just basically put in there. It's like, it's like all the grooves are big and massive. So that's why it's kind of like going up for like two minute song, which is kind of makes sense in a way. The B-sides are, the B-side, you know, you can take your own pick, you really think of it right anyway. So that's passion number 31. Um, there is another video, as I said, there is a wave cup coming video of passion records coming up soon. Uh, for passion fans uh but it won't be on this channel it'll be on another channel of mine which is going to be the the channel extras one it was only so passion number 31 is meant sundance and montego bay uh this is an old school classic this is excellent this is an album this is a double album called 12 years of pleasure now uh this is what i have to say is a safe safe bet for this for this record for this release safe I mean, I'm going to say safe is because I, I'm going to just basically very, 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 very say this, that this is, this is actually a safe. Okay. All I'm going to say. Ian Levine uh, was asked, asked by Proto Records, uh, Barry Evang Ev Ev Evangeli uh, from, from Proto to mix a new album for them. Now, he originally, uh, Barry Evangeli heard his original one of Record Chat Records Volume 1, which I have reviewed on this channel. Then he decided to... Uh, help them out with a release of this one. There's two versions of this. This is volume one. Volume two is another one that he did. And volume three is... Um, no, volume three is another one. But volume one and volume two of this is very good indeed. This this one is really good. All it is, it's just basically a, it's a segue of, uh, of, of four tracks each. And this is really, really good. This is really good indeed. So what is on this? Well, first of all, it's a double album, and I'll explain why it's a double album in a minute. But first of all, we have exclusive remixes. We've got Earthquake, my favourite song of the world ever. That is that is actually the remix of it, the re-release of it. The Searching, that's the mega mix from the B side of the re-release of the song. Alec Plastic is not a proper release. It's actually released on another record, Red Bus. And the False Nighting Over, is not, is not a proper release either. It's actually released another vinyl, another record company by itself. That one's really good. This one is an exclusive mega mix of it that, that Ian Levine did for the record. And this mix you can't get anywhere else. It's only available on this version. And I like this version better than the original. So this one, only on this one. And then you've got a brilliant version of Boogie Nights by Lafleur. And that one is a very good. Oh, it is his bass. It's a great bass guitarist. I'm smashing. Then we've got the uh, most, the most, not the best, not the best version, but I'll just very quickly say, 
that I have heard this, and I I don't think this is stands up. This doesn't stand up to the version of uh, Jeannie Tracy's version of this. This is kind of a bit too softy, but it's alright. And then we've got this brilliant, excellent ending of Sing Sing Sing, and my mate Steve has heard this one, and it is excellent. And I love to find out and get a full version of that one, and it's brilliant, really good indeed. So that's cool. That's been licensed by another out company, but this doesn't do with Proto Records, obviously. So the album's been segued by Ian Levine, mixed at Scorpio Sound London, which is his own studio, Ian's own studio, and mastered at Townhouse by Kevin Metcalf. Yes, Kevin Metcalf was involved with this. Great sound this as well. Uh, equipment supplied by Station Radio London, uh, or Radio Station London. Uh, additional track courtesy of Red Buzz Music and Hansa Music Germany. Uh, special thanks to Impulse Promotion Company, Rush Release Limited, which is actually a German record company. Nick Kanner, who used to work at Proto, George Cluck, Oliver Smallman, Gary London, and Nicky, Nicky, Nicky Prios. Nicky, I think that's actually Nicky Price. I think Nicky Price was involved because he was also, uh, uh, at the time, he was working for uh, Bolt Records, but Bolt has not been supplied in this one. Comedy producer was Nick East because Barry Evang Evangeli and Nick East did work together on re Proto Records. It's actually a percent of Kentish Town London Records and then it's Proto Records and did so. Very easy indeed. And the Proto label as well. And this is actually catalog number Proto 1. So this is volume one of the scene of records. So let's take out here. Uh, very luckily, this is this this is not how it came in, by the way, but this is how it came itself, which is cool. So you've got uh, the first one. You've got is the main uh, vinyl of it. This was damaged when I got it. This was heavily damaged, but very luckily, I used the glue making it, the glue on this, and it came out absolutely spot on. So it really was good. But apart from that, it was uh, it was pretty much uh, very damaged when I got it. But it's, uh, the seller did say it was brand new. I don't believe for a second it was brand new. It was actually, it was damaged all the way through, but it's been glued anyway and cleaned up very nice indeed. Uh, interesting information. You will never believe where this has been pressed at. This has been pressed at Townhouse, but also it's been uh, co-paid uh, for by EMI. EMI is is has done the label for it, and also the townhouse and EMI work together on this release as well, which is very good. Now the other thing about it is engraved inside. It's got this thing. Is it kind of picks on it? It says Miss Picky, Miss Piggy, mix, which is obviously Ian Levine, Ian Levine's mix, right? And uh, it's, it's been pressed at uh, MT, and it says there obviously townhouse. And then it's got their Proto 1A. I think it says that. Just get on the camera. I think it's Proto 1. Proto 1A1. Yeah. And that's my fingerprint now, obviously, from when the glue did the glue. On the B side of it, it's got here, engraved on this side, because Ian Levine did the whole lot of this. It says, let me just get on the camera, Miss Piggy. Oh, sorry. Don't buy Danish. Buy, don't buy Danish for, don't buy Danish for Miss Piggy. <laughs> I love them sort of things. That's pro oh, number one. Uh, Jack Adams did not actually master it. Kevin Metcalf, it was Kevin Metcalf at the Townhouse Studios did this one. Uh, great sound that one. But here's the bonus thing about it is, and I didn't even know you were going to get this for this price. This is the second print. Now this is the, apparently the second re-release of it because you got a bonus tone single with it, which I didn't know you had this actually for this. I didn't, so I didn't even say that actually. So a bonus tone single version of Don't Leave Me, Don't Leave Me This Way, which is the club version, which is the special remix by Ian Anthony Stevens. And this is the, uh, uh, the one that's soft. On the other side, it's basically just an edit version of it on the same single version with the group split the goos up so much of it. So, think of that as well. So, um, well, I, as I understand, I think that uh, this was just a repress from the uh, from the original because he actually released it on Proto itself. This is Enoch one one three A. This is double A one, double A double A side, obviously. Uh, so, this side will be the version for the clubbers to play on the short version of it, which is just well, I don't see any difference at all there, to be honest. But this mix goes up for eight minutes long, and it's uh, it's damn good. Uh, EMI is also paid for this again as well. Uh, there's nothing engraved on it really, just saying about Ian at one 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 three. 
and it's it's just there as a new way. As it's been it's been licensed by uh by licensed by Hansa Records as well for the purpose of the remix of it. 1983 Potter Record Productions and there it is. Lovely. Good. So that's uh, the 12 inches of pleasure album. I don't have volume two. Uh, I do want to get volume two of this one because the packaging on this is really good. But Proto did uh, a great job of this one. All I'm going to say to say for Mixes World is nothing really special about it. It's just not. It's not like the version of um, of Record Trip Records as it was before. Uh, but that one is the uh, that one's absolutely amazing to get. So if you are an 80s fan of mega mixes and stuff, this is where you want to begin as well, which is cool. I do have a few more of, I want to check out of the Levines that he did for other record companies, but we'll leave that up for now anyway. So that's totally just a pleasure. That's the mixed album by Ian Levine. Now, on to a new one now. New one? New? Where is it? Uh, brand new. Um, re just released this year. Well, actually 2016 actually. This is 2017 now. Uh, just released this year, something that I, I wanted to buy for myself, and it was well worth getting it actually, which is really, really good. And this is called 60s, Sound of a Decade. Yeah. Now, a lot to say about this. A lot to say. First of all, you're going to think that the cover's a bit naff. I know. There's a reason why it's actually this as well. This has been produced by Intempo, but I don't. But but for first of all, you may think, well, but they're the chain for B and M's in the UK. I know they are, but there's a main reason why. There's a main reason why these records are uh, out. It's nothing to do with Intempo. It's got nothing to do with this either, because it's a different company. Well, what this is, it's these. This is a very interesting thing. This this is actually from the America, this is actually from the states. This it's been um, the the engineer who did this album um, did a, a fantastic job of the sound on this. is is ingenious. I mean, it's good. I mean, you are getting right, and it doesn't say for a lie here. You are getting original artists with original recordings remastered for vinyl. Right, that is true, and the rest of it is true. But this is the interesting thing about it is, look at the silver bit here. Copyright proprietors have licensed sound recordings and, pack and packaging, and packaging, artwork for private home use only. So, so that so yeah so so in some records a packaging private home use only private. But but but, but, but it's a record. What the fuck. Anyway, uh, yeah. So anyway, this is the uh, this is the intent one. This is the this has been it's interesting. This record, but I'll explain why we've got on this album some great tracks in here. We've got the Tell Order I Love Her, the original one from Ricky Valance, Cadiz Clan by Every Brothers, Sherry Four Seasons, Hey Baby, Pooh Chanel, Rolling on Sue, Dion of the Belmonts, Three Steps to Heaven, uh, Save Dance Stands for Me, Are You Lonesome Tonight, Elvis Presley, Running Bear by Johnny Preston, and then we've got Return to Sender, then we've got Walk Right Back. Poetry Emotion, Take the Camera Baby, Bring the Top Two, Hey Paula, uh, Roses Are Red, Big Girls Don't Cry, and Apache by the Shadows. Now, you may think, you may think, if a company is putting out original artists of records, why is it they're not licensed by EMI? Why is it licensed by the Warner Brother Company? What, what, what's all this about? Well, this is actually interesting. The people who've made this, the people who've made it, is an American company called Carex Limited. Now, Carex is actually an American label, and this is being produced at Nashville in Tennessee. And this is absolutely true. So, um, this is on 180 gram vinyl. It's heavy. There's also five other five vinyls on this label, which is interesting as well. It? Now. The best thing about this vinyl is it is this the sound on this is incredible. I mean, this is seriously it is brilliant. So it's number is KXLP 07U. This is the seventh one. This is actually ten vinyls are released, and these are on hundred gram vinyl. And it's very heavy as well. Uh, but this is the interesting thing about it. If you just look at the, the actual matrix here, you may think you may see a thing called master disc. Um, I just got a master disc. 54. Now what that means is it's actually a pressing plant in Nashville, Tennessee and they've licensed, the people who've done this have licensed this record to be pressed on 180 gram vinyl 
itself. The the bad thing about it is, unfortunately, and I didn't know that this happened. These these records are, are are playable, but the only thing is, when you put it on your record player, the the needle starts to go all over the place because it starts slipping and sliding everywhere, which is kind of thingy. But what it is, what it means is, it's actually it's the uh it's the the weight of the vinyl that's all it is it's nothing to do with the with the, with the actual uh, thing of it i was put on the vinyl first and it went it's just like well, what's going on it's, it's, it's not the needle what it is it's just the material they've used on this is so heavy that it's actually been warped and so if you think about there it, you may think it's been warped isn't it well it has but it's it, it was it was going like it was it was playing like this all the time and it couldn't even get straight the other side of it plays perfectly because it's just Thing it's, it's just warped, so it's, but it's actually it's the way it's been pressed, which is kind of interesting. Um, I bought this for seven ninety nine at B and M's in the UK, and I tell you what, for what it's worth, this was well worth buying it for. And a gateful sleeve didn't have a gateful sleeve, and didn't swing inside it really. All the time it's just just packaged inside it, but this was really well worth it as well. So I only bought it just for, for myself. I just wanted to, I just wanted to see what it was like, so I tested it, and they and, they, and I tell you what, I've never heard. The sound caught on this is absolutely fantastic. I mean, 100%. So if you want to check yourself out a, te a test of a vinyl of, of these guys in tempo, go to B&M's and buy this thing because this is well worth it because the sound quality is good. But I do have to say, guys, if it doesn't play in your record player, it's it's normal because you have to adjust it to the specifications of the vinyl itself. But the CD sound is okay, but you can get more of these. But I'm going to get more of these anyway from the label and we'll, I'll check these out in the next couple of weeks as well for these ones. So it's the 60s sound of a decade. Right now, it's an unboxing. Unboxing? It's, yes. Um, now, I was uh, I was told by Mark I was not to open this until 2017. And it's now 2017. And, uh, and it is another version of the Cross album. And, uh, and it's, it's a very unusual because this one is uh is the canadian release of it um this is the same version i've got but it's more the, the track listing on this is more brighter to see than my original version of it as well i do have my original version but i'm not going to get it out i've got a knife over because i'm going to open it live um but i understand that that this he just gave me this because he said well here's another copy for you if you want it and that's all right i said well whatever you know sort of thing anyway so i haven't opened this it's it's it it it, has, it was damaged. It was, by the way, a little bit teared there because it was just the way I was holding it. But I'm going to un unbox this anyway. It was 4.99 from Market Records in London, and the stick is already there as well. That's actually on the thing, so it's going to stay there anyway. So I'm going to un. I'm going to put my knife here, obviously. So I'm going to unlock this now. There you go. Right. And we're going to have a look at this version of it now. So this should be the same version as what I've got because this is the one I've got, obviously, and it's it's interesting. So here's the. Oh. Well, this is interesting. Now oh, this is the first. Got a thing in here. It says inspected by number fifty one. Oh. Very interesting. Being on the side of it. No. Uh. Hmm. That's interesting, that Inspector by 51. What the hell? Uh, interesting, that. Yeah, very interesting. So this should be basically the same version I've got from uh, from its, uh, from its the uh, the one I've got. It looks to be actually exactly the same. Same Nux number, uh, same everything about it. Not really much about it. I have got a version of it, but my version's terrible. But uh, this thing was inside. Um, yeah, that's interesting. That I have no idea what that is. Whether that's number fifty-one, copy fifty-one of it, I don't know. Um, but the vinyl looks. Oh, it's got another one of the things inside of it. Look at it, mud. It's got mud on it. Damn it! That can be cleared off easy enough, anyway. <coughs> <coughs> so, uh, looking at the uh, the vinyl itself, it's actually good condition. Uh, it does look a bit better than the, my, my version, because my version is totally thingied. Because my version of Heaven for Everyone sounds awful, but this version may sound a bit better on this one. I'll have to play out later on, on the next couple of things. But uh, I don't know whether this is... Um, I'm not sure whether this has been uh, it been 
produced at the Red Rock plant in um, America, and they might have put that in as a as an actual uh, say that that's number fifty one. But Warner Brothers, Warner must have put that in and must have said uh, put that in as a special treat for them or it was anyway. So that's interesting. Um, I don't think there's anything else inside the sleeve. No, nothing inside. It's blank. But it's uh, but it's kind of interesting anyway. That it's pretty interesting. That, that's gonna be another collectible one for me. I think that is. So cross show it. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna really review it that much because I have got copies of my channel. And uh, as I say, I like the album. So nothing much to say about that really. Right, moving on now. More Queeny goodness now. Uh, this is an ex-used version of a one. Oh, I already have this one on top single, and you have seen in the past. This is one I was just given by Mark. He just said, "Look, I've got another version here, and you can have it if you want it, and it's there." And it's uh, it's just a, a version which I have. He's having this version really for it, so he's like, he gave me all these basically for this. Uh, it's just basically the same version I've got. Uh, the vinyl is being damaged very, very badly on this one. Uh, which has been thinking of it. This is the uh, this is a townhouse print, I think. Uh, but this is ah, this is another thing about it is this is what this is interesting. Now, if you look at this, now on the uh, the van itself, it, it's got an engraving there, and it actually says, uh, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but it says townhouse DMM, I think. I think it says townhouse DMM version of it. That's what it means. I don't know what it actually says there. It says something on there. Uh, town. The townhouse DMM, that's why it's townhouse DMM. And on the other side, it's got um, nothing on it really, it's got just the same basic uh, bog standard uh, <laughs> matrix number on it, which is thing in the net. Uh, but it's, it had this in the possession for a while, so I've got to copy of this anyway. So that's why I want it all. Moving on to the next one now. And uh, the next one we've got is a, uh, a version of. Next one we have is the Miracle album. I don't have this on vinyl at all, but this is the first one I've got it on vinyl, which I believe. This is the original UK edition of it. And uh, on the camera, it looks like it's got a blue sky. On mine, I can see it's green. Um, I don't know what all that's about for some reason. Uh, it's the Miracle album. Uh, I've been wanting this for vinyl for, for quite a while. The downside is, the downside is this vinyl is damaged to hell. Uh, this can't be played, and you, I've tried to clean this many, many times, and the playable on this is terrible. Um, but uh, for what it's worth, it's it's still a good album to listen to. So it is a bit damaged. It's it's been it's been um, a little bit of scratch on this as well, and um, obviously the sound on this is the sound on this. I wouldn't even I wouldn't say that this is the best. I'd say that this was uh, this was very very. Um, if it was more louder on it it would be good but sound quality this is not that it isn't the best but it's it'll do but it's Towers DMM again this one um so I am looking for a new version of this one anyway when I get a chance but I won't be selling this one no I won't be selling this one but I'll be keeping it anyway and uh, and it's very thin vinyl as well and it which is cool but most of the vinyl as I say it, it's just very very uh, it's uh, the quality's the quality is not the best but it's quiet. But there you go. That's how it was in the 80s. I suppose supposed to find any way from it. But it's a good album. Um, as I said, I don't have a vinyl yet. Um, I do want to get innuendo on vinyl if possible. There is a gatefold version of that hanging around actually. Which is interesting. But um, but I can't play that one because it's uh, it's absolutely... can't play that because it's, it's absolutely unbearable to listen to. But the version I'll get uh, on one of Discogs is going to be a, a, a gatefold version of it. Which is what I've ordered. Which is interesting. So it's a miracle album on vinyl. Now I have to say, first of all, when you guys even start to ask me why I have this, I don't like this at all. I don't like Blondie. I absolutely hate her, right, for a start. I was only just giving it, that's all it was giving it for. But all I've got to tell you is, I just, I just can't stand her. I can't stand her. She's just a terrible singer. Um, Heart of Glass is one of the most popular songs she did, but this one, I can't stand it. Next one. This album is absolutely fantastic. This is the most requested album and one of the best albums you can get from Starship. And I tell you what, in the 80s, this is music that you fucking would have loved. This is one of the most best albums I've ever did in No Protection. I've have been I've looked everywhere for this version for a clean version of this vinyl. And again, 
I can't play this one. <laughs> it's got it's got damaged. But this album is is one of the best albums I ever did. Great slick and the guys. It's top notch stuff in the world is. Uh, very luckily, I did manage to download the album anyway, but uh, for the vinyl version, it isn't playable. But we've got awesome tracks in here. We've also got Beat Patrol. We've got Nothing Gonna Stop Us Now. It's not over till it's over, which is which is the song that was originally recorded by another band. Girls Like You, Willing to Lie, The Children, I Don't Know, Transatlantic Batman, Set Night Music. Absolutely fantastic album, this. Uh, done by Keith Olsen, Peter Wolf, and Nadia Michael Walden, who did obviously just that on the song there. Uh, saved their career actually from uh, the, the label. It was actually the last album they were going to do, uh, but this is in partnership with because the Grunt, the Grunt label, th they were they were going in between of uh, of their own label at the moment. RCA was was wanting them to get out their Grunt deal, which was Grey Stick's original um, label, but because they were having problems at the time with RCA, they they, they went when they went to Germany and re released it in Germany. They decided that it was better if it was just given a, a name for them, basically, until the RCA label died. Um, so, the interesting thing about this is these records in Germany are are very, very good because these have been pressed at the Warner the Warner Group in in Germany. They're nothing to do with RCA, by the way. It's actually uh, Warner Brothers have done this themselves, and the sound quality is good. Uh, as I say, I tried to play some record player, but it keeps going. Blah, 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 it keeps going. Woo, just slides all over the all over the place. So this is a this is unplayable. Uh, so RCA again, it did is get the song out. We see BMG Music. That's why that's when they were just about to finish their deal with uh, RCA and BMG Beatles Music Group decided to buy them off. And uh, but uh, I loved. I always loved the RCA label. It was a great thing as well from it, which is cool. And um, and yeah, but. It's a shame. It's just, it's just all it is. It's just that the mud on this. It's just the way this has been muddy, and and unfortunately, the, the well, I've tried to play this before, and all it did was just keep skipping and skipping and skipping, and then it was just very bad. There was a UK version of kicking around, but uh, it would be nice to have a good version of this in thingy. But uh, but um, I'm sure it'll get it one these days. I will think of it as a good album. But this album, excellent album. Do get it. I've got a download. I think I have. But this album, great stuff indeed. Starship and no protection. Now, I love me rock, love me rock stuff so much, and uh, this album, I I'm not going to really, I'm going to, I'm not going to say anything bad about it, but I think this album is a, a lacquer album of, of UFOs that is kind of alright, really. This is UFO Lights Out. This is the album. I do have all the UFO albums on download, <laughs> and I, and I, uh, and I haven't heard this album for quite a while actually. So this is not the Dr. Dr. album by the way. So if you're thinking where's Dr. Dr. on this, it's not on it at all. This is one of their later albums that came out. Ron Neverson from the Led Zeppelin days produced this one. Great producer, he is brilliant. Uh, recorded their studios and it's in the Pi Studios. And yes, yeah, that's what it is. We've got uh, the song I hear obviously, that's brilliant, is Too Hot to Handle, which is bloody awesome. Just Another Suicide, Try Me, uh, Lights Out. And getting getting ready alone again, or and electric phase and love to love, which is brilliant. But two other handles, bloody good song, that good song indeed. This is the Chrysalis. Uh, this is Chrysalis Records. This is on Market Street there as well. And um, this is a uh, I think this was out nineteen eighty. I think it was nineteen eighty. This one, no, nineteen seventy seven. It was out. This is Chrysalis. This is actually the, the, the label had just been uh, changed from green to blue and uh, white, which I, love. I always like that label so much as well. Uh, this has uh, been now interesting about this. Now it doesn't actually say where it's actually been been pressed because uh, is it side two? Is it side one? Is it side one? That's no, side eight. It says here TWL. So it's TWL. I don't know what that is. TWL because EMI is not paid for this, and it looks like Chrysalis has paid for it themselves because it looks like there's no indication who pressed it, who who did it. Um, I don't know. So it doesn't have any education at all, and it just says TMS. So I don't know whether, um, or TMLS, I don't know whether that's been pressed at an American plant or not. But no indication at all, who the hell pressed it? Not George Marino did it, but whatever it was anyway. But 
yeah. UFOs are a good band, actually. I do like the stuff. Uh, I do prefer the older stuff. I do prefer Dr. Doctor Doctor as their best album and uh, the best works in the stuff as well. But uh, I did get a best song of theirs. And I think, um, well, the monkey one with I'm a Loser on it is a classic song indeed. And uh, it's really good indeed. So I'll see if it all lights out. Uh, not a bad album, actually. Pretty good. And then we're coming on to a celebratory album. No, I don't have 2112, I'm afraid. But yeah, I've got Rush. And uh, the live album, all the words are stage. Um, now, I do keep away from live albums on download. I don't know why. I just don't think it's the right, the right sound for it. And the sound's not authentic to me. I don't think it is anyway. But when you hear it on vinyl, it sounds brilliant. And this is one of the most best live albums they ever, ever did. And without a doubt, smashing album. This brilliant album indeed. Saved their career, actually, this album did. This is their... I think this was their first live album that they brought out. Uh, this was on the 2112 tour. And uh, and twenty one twelve is actually all complete on this on live. It is fantastic. You may want to hear the the version that came out uh, on the, on the polygram horrible polygram versions. It sounds different. This is the complete original uh, mix on it as well. Uh, absolutely fantastic. So we've got the Steel Day. We've got Fly by Night and um, some for nothing in the mood. Uh, next up, part twenty one twelve complete. We've got also, we've got the uh, by Tor and the Show Dog. In the end, and working man, which is just the, which I understand is the first time they played it live on the vinyl version. And find my way, and what we, what are you doing? This, this is just gold. This is pure gold. This was brand new, and this is to die for. This is this is what you should have in your collection. Is a rush album, a live rush album. <coughs> it's all complete. It's a double. It's obviously the double get full C version, and you don't get vinyl like this ever again. You don't. I mean, the new versions brought on now are just like fucking horrible. Uh, but you don't get remixed versions and terrible versions. It's the first time it's actually done on here. It is the uh, a phon a phonogram version. Yeah, I think it was pressed the phonogram as well, which is interesting. So there's two vinyls in here. We've got uh, the this is the original Mercury release as well with it. This is this is number. I think this is the first one. Yeah, record one of a two record set. So this is the polygram published this as well. There's your polygram stamp there, which is cool. Good. This is the um, sound Courtney is brilliant on this. Uh, completely segue mix of it, which is brilliant. And uh, as I say, uh, just a, a classic album. Classic album indeed. I think 2012 is a good album indeed. They've released on vinyl. I do stay away from reissues on vinyl, I'm afraid, because I don't like them. And they don't, sound, they don't seem to sound authentic the originals are. So, which is my, well, that's my opinion anyway. And then we've got the uh, complete 2112. This is the uh, by, by Tor Snowder, which is quite long actually for that for a song that, that big. Huge, huge song that is. And then we've got 2112, the uh, complete version of it. Without any, any cuts in it, and one segue track. Which is the uh, Working Man. Actually, Work, Working Man, I found my way, is actually two tracks in one, would you believe? Which is interesting, that actually. So, that's an interesting thing at all. I know the bag's a bit naff, but it, I think you need some glue in it or something. But uh, I absolutely enjoyed that album so much. And uh, I listened to it on download, but I, I think the download version is different to this. So, the remixed version on Polygram, fuck that version. This one, absolutely top notch stuff that is. Wish all the words are stayed. Classic album for a classic fan. And now, we're coming on to the last one. Well, actually, we've got a few more to do. We're going to go now to Queen and to your heart attack. Yes, I know, I know, I know you're all going to say, but you've shown this in another video where you did it with the, you showed us the, the version you have. I know I did. But this is a special version. But this one is for diehard fans. And I know it's a good album, I know it's Jim, Jim's uh, favourite album as well, which you all know about. But, uh, but anyway, that's not the point. The point is, when we research this out, now you may think that this is, you're not going to say, is this different to the one you have? It is. It is, it is. Um, when Mark gave me this, um, he noticed that the quality of this is more louder and broader and in your face, you know, as a vinyl should be. And you know, you've got the same exact back, same trident logo there, same thing there, blah, 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 you know, same thing, everything else. But you're all gonna think, well, what's the what's the difference of this one to your version of it that you have? Well, the difference of this, which is interesting actually, is this this sleeve. 
Now, my sleeve is different to this one. First of all, uh, there's no copyright on this at all for the Queen logo. And the lyrics are intact. See? Look. Looks my trident on them. See? And you may notice there is nothing about Queen Productions on this. See? Nothing about Queen Productions at all. Okay. All that stuff's the same. See? I'm trying to see the something. Lyrics are the same. Uh, so I went over some May. It's all crazy, and then he goes, well, and that is the main thing of it. Okay, that's 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 sleep. So you all know this is the this is not the reproduction. This is not, this is not the second generation. <laughs> this is the very first copy of the final. <laughs> the very first copy of it. So this is the first pressing that came out. Now, how do I know this? Well, this is interesting. The first thing I've got to tell you is that this label is darker. It may look bright on the screen, but where I'm, where I'm looking at it, it is pretty darker than my version of it. But if you look very carefully, the uh, there is it's a lot more um, nice and glossy than the versions that you probably might have seen in the past, which is even nicer. So this is the uh, so here is the interesting thing about it is this is very interesting. Now, if you go by the top here, it says Yax, uh, if you look at the camera, it says Yax 4881, EMI stereo, blah, 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 that nonsense, but this is interesting, okay, when you've got the Yax 4881-33U, is that right? Yep. Now, if you look around the other side, you've got CAD, and then if you go to the, oh, that's it, and on the other side, same thing as before. And you may notice the Queen log was actually uh, fending off a little bit here. I think that's been torn the many. But look at the B side though. Now, you see something different. My version is not like this at all. It's a lot more longer. And that side's more longer. So, yeah. It's very longer indeed. Now, I have been told from Mark that he told me that apparently this version contains a longer intro of... Um, Brighton Rock, and it does, and it is absolutely brilliant as well. And it's longer because some versions on this, the original versions, the reissues that come up from this one, I've actually changed it because apparently it's been edited. But this one apparently is a raw mix, apparently, that I've been given because I've played this, and you should hear this because this sounds to me like it's the the first um version of it that was not that had the has all the um. It's a segue version of it, but it has got bits of it, which is kind of like uh, bringing it a little bit more um, raw. -er. So you're hearing it more like rehearsal type thing of it as well. The outro of um, of, of Latin the Gods is um, is well more, uh, the very end of it is very well more um, enhanced as well, because the sound of it is incredible in it, to be very honest with you. Uh, but it's, but this, is, this is a unique gem, this is. Um, so we have a look at the uh, matrix number. Now it says on there uh, 4882. Uh, it says 4882. Now if you notice something about this record, it's the number at the top. Now that would normally say yaks. Now that would not would not be now that would normally not be pressed on to this because that would be off there. You see, and they would say EMI stereo EMC uh, 061. Now this is the only one I think that has got these numbers on it because Yax, I don't even think these were printed on the versions itself. But uh, Yax 4882 and Yax 4881. I'd say something right that this this edition of Sheer Heart Attack is the best version I've ever heard. It's longer, it's not edited, it's been a mixed one by um, Roy Thomas Baker, and for me, it just sounds very, very good. So this could be the rarest record that I probably have in my possession, to be very honest with you. So, um, but if you have a version of this one with them numbers on it, then let me know. But this is a, a first pressing of the vinyl itself, which is good. So she attacked very rare edition of it. And I think this is one I think is called my best queen collector I've had yet. Right, seven singles now. Uh, I have got another seven single, but I don't know where it is because I've lost it somewhere, and it's my um, it's my thick of the wrist one, and I've lost it. I don't know where it's gone. I'll find it. Don't worry, I'll find it anyway. 
Right now we're going to come on to seven singles now, but this time we're going to th this these seven singles that I've got are very special ones. Um, very very special indeed. Actually, these ones never knew these were rare. These were very rare indeed, and these are still brand new. Um, some of them I have cleaned. Some of them I have tried to do the best I can. We're going to start with this one first. Now I'm here. Uh, single, which is the uh, EMI two two five six one. Now you may think. You may think that this could be the rarest Queen 7 single ever. Well, it is actually. Uh, this is the, um, this one, as I understand, is different to the uh, final edition of it, the, the album version of it, obviously, which is, which is kind of really good. So what is different about this one is, first of all, there's something not right with this record. It's the label itself. And... And the mix itself is actually interesting as well, which is very, very interesting. First of all, let's talk about this first. Uh, obviously, uh, it's EMI 2256A version. Let's just compare it with the matrix number, which is there. EMI 2256A1U. And uh, nothing else indicated on there. Plus, the other side of it is uh, EMI 5622B, which is correct. I think that's indicated on that side as well right okay so the only thing that you may wonder is that this is all right and this is fine blah 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 and everything else but this is interesting this is interesting trying all your productions is printed but look it says 1974 but no copyright information is underneath it goes on for the other side as well 1974 and nothing is printed underneath it now as I understand, this is an original, an authentic. As I understand, and I think I'm right about this, Queen C Queen did not own this at the time that Trident bought them out. That means that what it is is this version of and now I'm here is it is not it is the same version as the album version, but this is the more not owned by Queen version. This is the Trident version that they did. So you can tell from the fact that this was supposed to be 1974 Queen Productions. Queen Productions is no longer involved. Trident. So Trident Productions must 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 have bought them out. So the Queen, they were trying to obviously get a deal to say, screw you, we own it, you own it, I own it, we own it. You know, they were, that's what the reason was. So that's why there's nothing printed on this as well, which is that you know so that is a very interesting mystery that is the version of lily at the valley is the same version that was on the singles collection and this version on the vinyl version sounds in wow <laughs> wow wow amazing very good indeed and um also the fact is that we're trying to promote the album as well from the from the rpc heart attack emc 3061 and and obviously, yeah, so this also kind of bemuses the fact that maybe the fact that they were, maybe it was released at the time, maybe it was, maybe they were trying to buy it off them, or maybe the rights from Trident's were theirs, and they said, fuck you, because we'll own it ourselves, or it is. Anyway, that's a very interesting one, that is. I do have another one like that anyway, and that is on my other, my, uh, my, uh, Lady's Valley one, I'm sorry, the Fickler Wrist. I will find that one. I will try and find that one again. And I'll show you that one because that's an interesting one as well. So that's the that's the not Queen Productions owned. Now I'm here. On to the next one now. And I did have this in seven single. My version went somewhere else, disappeared. <laughs> but this is the um, European release of Driven by You. This is not the UK version. This is not the so injected crap. This is the a very interesting version. This is. This is the. Um, International code 0624586-7. That's four records. Make sure you got the old path levels there. It's actually really, really interesting there. And uh, anyway, so we've got this. This is the normal album version of uh, Driven by You on here. And obviously you've got just one live, which is the um, the single, which is just the, not one of Brian's best attempts. That is, that singles. Just, nah. Yeah, I should have been afraid of that one anyway, but never mind. It's the, this is obviously 
very very uh, uh, very cleverly it's it feels more like um pasty type thing on it obviously not right anyway um so yeah interesting indeed which is which is very you know, weird um but glossy type paper on it which is really well, this is the interesting thing about it not so this it's this ever seen a picture have you ever ever seen something like this ever in your life i've never seen this ever this is the um it, this is the european version of it obviously from german writing which is very interesting uh this as i understand is um it's it's actually longer this is actually it's not as condensed as the one on the uk version because the uk version was way too big this one is more of the the best version to go for sound quality this is bloody awesome the only thing that I can just tell is it unfortunately we don't know who mastered this because um we think Kevin Metcalf might have done this but international number is printed there we see in, in the metrics number itself uh doesn't say anything else about it very thin vinyl as well and the grooves are so thin on it it's very very thinny type thing as well but sound quality is really amazing and um and obviously then you've got the b-side which is just one life which is the that as well and it's very interesting actually how they pre pressed this part on their version of it that was like that wasn't actually on the uk version of it which is interesting um but this one is as i say very very good indeed the sound quality is really cool but the sound quality on this one is well better than the uk one the uk one we got was bloody awful it was very very terrible indeed but uh but this one in the version the german version driven by you great song and a really good good cover as well right now we're going to come on to flash aha Finally got Flash on seven single. Yes, this was also being re-released again in the charts just a few years ago. Um, also seven single release on digital download, and I do have the cover for this, but everything's kind of messed up everywhere. I don't know where the front cover is for it, but this is the Flash record. This is the UK edition of it, and this is interesting. Interesting, not the cover. It's this, the vinyl of it. Right, the vinyl edition of this. Now. Uh, I researched this a lot, and it took me about this record. You wouldn't believe what what it is. It's actually this is the seven single mix, obviously, which is the best version to go for. And in my opinion, heaviest song ever done. Sound quality is to bloody die for, and this is amazing. Sound quality and it's, it's really interesting. But there's something about this you, need, you never you'll never know about this as well, which is cool. So see, this is the original uh, Queen version. This is obviously the uh, Flash uh, tour. Queen Music Limited, EMI, Publishing Wide Music Limited, yes, Queen still don't own the rights to this record, they don't even own the rights to the song, um, but they have to be published by two different companies, um, also been made by Sign Productions, and, actually, by May, blah, 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 I think that's about it, okay, produced by Brian May and Mac for Queen, yes, you may wonder, Brian May, right, okay, and Mac for Queen Productions, now look at this, it says here, Produced by May Mac. Right. What is with this then? Right. This is interesting. It says May Mac there, right, but it doesn't say for Queen Productions, but here it says for Queen Productions. Okay. If the camera can focus in. <laughs> focus, focus camera. Focus. Focus. Uh, so yeah, so it says produced by, by May and Mac for Queen Productions Limited. Executive producers are Queen. Obviously, and it says executive, executive producer queen, right? Producer, which is one producer, obviously, queen. <laughs> okay, and then we've got on the B side, uh, it says again, produced by Brian May and Mac for Crew Productions, Green, Rewind Music Limited, and it's obviously Football Fight Referee Mercury. This version of Football Fight it does not have the intro on it. This is actually very well uh, mixed because I think what this version is, it's it's the without any dialogue on it it's just basically instrumental all the way through and it's really really brilliant as well and it's uh well worth it for the for the credibility of it as well and brian's guitar on this it sounds more i don't know it sounds more more different on it which is interesting so here we go with a lot there is the matrix number now is let me just have a look it is there emi uh, 5126b then emi 5126a but you may think well, hang on a minute. What's that scribble out thing there? Yeah, it's being re reproduced. Frankly, someone was trying to uh, put the wrong number on there. It's actually, this is actually says something else. I can't make out exactly what it is. 
someone's put them there. I think it's SM something EMI 26A1. And also, the other thing about it is it's got here. It was done by uh, Nick W, who actually did a uh, master as well, which is which is just a fantastic engineer. He is really good in engineering deep fruit, which is cool. So that's the football fight one flash uh, theme. That's the single version. Don't know what the front cover is, which is kind of interesting. And the last one we have is this one. Yes, we have got the uh, the new one, which is not the new one. This is the Stay in Power. I don't know why it says back chat on here. <laughs> I need to. It's like he is back chat. There's no two for this one though. This is um, the uh, yes. Yeah, this, this is the uh, back chat single uh, with B side of it, which is uh, Stay in Power, which I think. And I, I know, I know, I know. I'm, I'm going to stop rambling, saying it's terrible, it's terrible, it's terrible. Anyway, it's, the song's actually not bad. Back chat. I don't know why people always keep saying back chat is one of their best songs that a queen ever did. Kind of, it's not really. The thing about this one is though, it's the remix of Back Chat. Yes, you see, the remix of Back Chat. This is not the version on the album. This is only the version you can get on Seven Single, uh, which I understand is different, and I think it's better actually. But I don't understand why people say that this is the best song ever written by them. It's not really. It's, kind of, it's alright, but it's taken from, it's just taken from the album Hot Space. Well, this version is not from the Os Hot Space album. <coughs> but, then again, who cares? And then we've got the uh, Stay in Power version there, with a special credit by Arif Mardin from the BG Days, who did uh, Drive Talking on them other songs. Uh, yes, hold me by Arif Mardin. Okay, you put, oh, just put your stamp on it. Just put EMI. Put your stamp on it. Let's put his, let's put his name on it. Yeah, um, I don't think that, I don't think that I, I really have to say that I don't really think that I'm very attached to this one. I don't like the Hot Space album at all. It's just a terrible album. If I had the version of Lapis Palabas more on it and everything else, that would be nice. But obviously this one is kind of like being a, a bit of a thing. So it's kind of thing, isn't it? So Bachelor's obviously the A side of it. Now, Matrix number. Nick W again has actually done this again. He's very tiny right in the ears, so he's actually he's there. So Nick W's coming again and doing his uh, fancy little work on it again. And uh, the next number is if we can just have a look EMI 5325A1 1 1. This is actually the new matrix number they were doing at the time, so EMI must change their codes at the time of the new pressing plant. And then on the other side, we've got is this is, this is interesting, it's an interesting one. You've got EMI. 5325B-3-1-1-1X dash 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 times, one times, okay, I don't know what that means anyway, interesting, but yeah, interesting, so the remix of Backchat, um, I have heard it actually, I don't really see any difference at all to it at all, all I'll just quickly say, is that it's worth it for what it's worth anyway, it's, it's alright, if you want to go, if you want to go and get it, get it for the song quality, for the song, it's alright anyway, for what it is anyway, and that's, that's that. That's it for now for the vinyl collection. Um, I will try and find my other vinyl if I can find it. Because um, I don't know where it is. It's lost somewhere. But that's it for now. And until then, see you next time.